Kimber Lee is a highly respected actress, model, producer, television host, spokesperson, and master of ceremonies. She is well steeped in the Arizona cinema scene whilst residing on the big island of Hawaii with her husband. Kimber has also received a gold Hermes and Telly Award for her work in journalism. You won't want to miss today's show. Thanks for tuning in. I want to try and take in all the highs Embrace them for more than a moment's time I want you, please don't move when I push you away I know I contradict myself some days But will you ride the low, low, lows with Welcome to Mental Health News Radio. I am your host, Kristen Sinanta Walker. Our goal is to help discussions about mental health be a regular part of your daily life. No different than discussions about physical health. Mental illness can be a topic of discussion under the umbrella of mental health, along with so many other topics. This show is the original program on mentalhealthnewsradionetwork.com. Our network of shows are played in over 180 countries and cover more topics under that umbrella than you can possibly imagine. We were talking about mental health long before it became cool and popular to talk about. And thank goodness... It has become so popular. We have incredible guests, advocates, patients, experts, you know, people. Thank you for tuning in and enjoy our intro music, a song named Lowe's, written by Aubrey Toon. You can find her music at www.aubreytoone.com. Kimber, thank you so much for coming on Mental Health News Radio. I am so delighted to be a guest. Thank you for the invitation to be a part of 2021. This is my first one of the year. Oh, that's nice. That's not, you know what? This is my first one of the new year too. Wonderful. Let's do this. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So our listeners know a tantalizing little bit about you. Um, so I'd love to delve into more. I mean, there's, it, it reads like a Roman scroll, uh, <laughs> author of multiple books, uh, you know, TV producing and so on and so on and so on. So can you just kind of, um, give us the condensed version? Sure. So I'll take you really shortly back to my roots, which was, I was a 21 year career flight attendant. But during the days of flying, uh, seeing the world from a first class seat, it was amazing, but I still wanted more. So the airline uh, had done a uh, had a casting call for a commercial and I was cast as one of the uh, leads. And after that, the acting bug bit. So mm-hmm. I got I learned everything I could about film, producing, acting. And I did all of those. I've been an award-winning actress, producer, director. And then I was a little bit bored and wanted more. Mm -hmm. And so I uh, got married, moved to Hawaii, and my husband said, write a book. And that was how Greta Garbage, a (laughs) best-selling book, became uh, to fruition. And after that book was done, I got bit by the author bug. (laughs) And I wrote two more after that. Amazing. Amazing. And I know the first time that we spoke, you were sitting outside and it was so lovely and I could hear the birds, the whatever birds were there in Hawaii at the time, just making music in the background. Yes, this is a very wonderful place to live. Uh, The island is just very generous and it gives aesthetically, it gives um, uh, abundantly and I, I, I grew up in Pittsburgh and ended up in Arizona for 35 years and then med, made another diagonal move to Hawaii. And I guess this was where I was supposed to be all along. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Um, a lot has been coming up for people lately and including me um, about those diagonals. 
that you take and that it used to be in my mom's generation, a little bit in mine, it used to be, oh, you should try to don't introduce yourself and all the stuff that you do that's all over the place and different diagonals. You really need to be someone that's been at the same job for 30 years. You've never moved far from, you know, where you grew up and your life is pretty darn vanilla. Oh, yeah. And I mean, that was looked at. Remember those times? But that, that was the That was the way to be. Yes, absolutely. That's one of the reasons why I stayed 21 years in the airline industry. But my heart inside, I knew I needed more and wanted more. And you either stay stagnant or you go after it. That's very true. And even when people like I will have people sometimes when I'm going off on a different JAG even with knowing in the mental health field, that's actually good for your brain. That actually is what you need to do in order to keep your brain function well is do those jig jags. But even knowing that people will go, are you on this again? Something that I'm gnawing on and I want to make happen. And then it happens. And they're like, how did you do that? And I go, uh, maybe because I kept gnawing on it. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah. You just keep put every day. It's one foot in front of the other. And if you dedicate a little bit of time here and a little bit of time there, eventually, wait, what did they say? It's 10,000 hours of commitment to a project that makes you a master. So, uh, and then if you look at it as each job that you do that's different is preparing you for the next one. So I say, take as many as you can put on your plate and eat at once. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. So when you told friends and family, Hey, I'm going to write a book and here's the title. What was the reaction? Oh, that's a good question. I didn't tell anybody. My husband suggested that I write the book because uh, I, the reason I didn't tell anybody was for fear of failure this way. If they didn't know, then I haven't failed. Mm. And so I took two years and wrote it. And I, as soon as it got published, that's the first I shared it. I remember sending the book cover to my brother first and his only response back was, wow. (laughs) And the reason why I do that with any project is because I believe in energies. Everything has an energy surrounding it. And if you send that out into the world or the universe and say, hey, this is what I'm doing. Well, then I believe that that person's thought processing of whether, oh, that's going to be a terrible project. She's never done that before. And I believe it sticks to that. So I keep it pure, like a pregnancy. It's inside your body. It's yours. You own it. And nobody can see it until you show it to them. And I believe that's been the greater part of my success is keeping everything pure and to myself. You know, that, that makes sense. I will think about that too, where um, I'll, something good is, looks like it's not about 99% going to arrive. And I'll listen to a voice that says, yeah, don't talk about it yet. Absolutely. Because that anything could happen, but if you're the only one that's thinking nothing will happen, then that's what will manifest. If you say, if someone else goes, oh, well, that's not going to happen. There, there's that slight chance that, yeah, that energy will seep in and that will manifest as well. Are you going to um, continue to do acting, producing that, that kind of work, uh, film work, or are you going to, you know, just keep doing the book that being an author piece or both? That's another great question. I don't, really spend a lot of time thinking about what is next. I I rather wait to see what happens next. I always ask life to take me where I'm needed. Uh, How can I contribute? And what does that look like? And and how do I get there? Uh, I know you've interviewed Mark Victor Hansen. He wrote that book, Ask. And so there's a lot in that of asking the universe for the, for the things that you want. And when you ask and it answers, it comes in the most delightful way. And it's, it's a game. I, I view it as a game between 
life and myself. And I've never looked for any of the successes I've achieved. They've always found me. And so I encourage anybody that's listening, if you want to know what's next, ask and wait and see what happens. And don't worry so much about the time frame of, oh, it's not here yet. And I've been waiting. And right. because it comes when you're done asking, which is really, mm. that's, that's the joy in it. Because then when you're on to your next question, there's a little bit of delay and then it gets there and you're like, wow, I completely forgot about that. <laughs> so for my future, um, I'm sure I, you know, I ask for just whatever and it comes in whatever form. A lot of times it's different. A lot of times it's the same, but I love acting uh, in the Corona world. It's not really conducive right now. So right. I'm, I'm really happy. I chose another, uh, here's how I like to say it. I like to milk a cow from every nipple. Cause you just never know what's going to start and stop. And so I love that. <laughs> and so I kind of just keep milking every, every one. And I might have one cow or five, but, uh, it just, it's just a constant flow of different and good and fun. I noticed this about um, friends of mine and colleagues that live in Hawaii. Maybe they didn't grow up there. You know, they, they're people that used to live on the mainland and then they, um, you know, migrated to Hawaii and they are so chill after about maybe year two, they're just very, you know, whatever, wherever I needed to be, like you just said, <laughs> you think that's a Hawaii thing? Um, I believe it's contributing to my uh, characteristic of being that because coming from the mainland and living there most of my adult life, it's a very hurried, scurried pace. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you have to, I, I had to meditate in order to get into that space of the chill. But here, it's really strange. Time moves super, super slow. You could be busy all morning long. You get up at six and you could be busy all morning long and you look at the clock and it's only eight. And you're like, oh my God, I still have the rest of the day. And that was one of the very good reasons why I wrote the three books that I wrote because I needed something to fill my day. So the, the, the time here moves very slow. It's super aesthetically appealing the air has that ocean salt air that just puts moisture into your body. And there's a lot of what is called aloha. And actually it's aloha. And it's the ha. Ah. The ha is the breath, the spirit of love and calm and peace and joy. And if mainlanders could, and, and that I hope that's not a... <laughs> Uh, a slur of sorts for words, but if people on the mainland could learn a little bit of, of the ha, the spirit of love, right. I, I believe time would slow down there and they would be calmer and more chill. That's why I like living in the country because I grew up in Southern California. And so being out way out in the country, it's that slowing down thing for me too. Yes, and I'm sure it's just as beautiful, Kristen, because when I leave the island to go to the mainland and we go to Colorado or someplace that's secluded, it, you, it's, a, it's a, the same but yet different type of beauty and you get a different energy feel for it. But again, I think on the mainland, people are just, they're not living in the moment, they're living in the future or the past and they're mi missing the most important component, which is the very moment. And that's where all the miracles are. So if who's ever listening can just like slow down, take some mind breathing breaths for about two minutes and really feel what your moment feels like. And if you do that five or six times a day, you'll start to see miracles produce because that's where they happen. Yeah. That. I bought this, I bought the, uh, I got a Fitbit for Christmas Yeah, and this Fitbit is so amazing because it has what I just told you about that, that two minute breathing technique. It's Ooh. either two, 
it's either two or five minutes and it, it force it buzzes and it forces you to slow down for a minute. It also encourages you to walk 250 steps a, a, an hour, which means if you're too stagnant, it'll nudge you to say, Hey, get up, walk around. Oh, nice. And yeah, this, so this Fitbit is a, Amazing. I know that has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but I just thought I'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm getting into it. I'm like, oh, interesting. Tell you, you've been sitting down too long. So yeah, I'm glad you did. We, we other, all need that after pandemic year. So yes. And the other thing it does is it gives you a sleep analysis and it tells you whether you've had a good night, a fair night or, a, you know, whatever kind of night's sleep, which is also super important because- right. It, it brings awareness to your uh, physical health, which is so important right now. And if you have the mind, body, spirit, the three components combined, uh, yeah, you're going to be rocking for 2021. <laughs> <laughs> when you, you know, well, I know you didn't tell anybody, you know, about the book, you kept it to yourself. So let's talk about, um, because it is very, very personal. I, I loved it related to so much of it. So when you um, finally put it out there, how, what was the reaction? Oh, well, for me, oh my goodness. I almost didn't want to, I wasn't really going to tell anybody. I was just going to put it up on Amazon. And then it went best selling on the day of its release, which was a total mind blow to me. Uh, never expected it as a first time author. But uh, the, the energy, so when I wrote the book, I, the book is a lot about a very dysfunctional life, which I know many of us have had. But one of the components in the book is seeing the light, which is the energy of for whoever can relate to God, the universe, uh, any, any energy that is other than the dark. And that is what saved my life. It was an incident that happened to me when I was five. And without that, I truly believe I wouldn't be alive and here today because two of my brothers did not make it. They committed suicide as well as my mother. And my older brother is a recovering alcoholic. So I feel like I, my life was saved by the light. And when I was writing the book, I wanted to infuse it with the light so that when people opened it, perhaps that energy would come out and it would open up into the universe because right now we are in dark, well, I don't want to say dark because then I'm creating it, but we're not in as much light as we should or could be. Right. So my purpose for writing the book was not so much for myself, but for the for anyone who picked it up and opened it up so that it would be a source of energy being produced in a mass way. Yeah. And though you never know with family and or pe friends of the family, because everybody's perception is their own perception. So when you write something that's so very personal, um, that's, that's a huge shift for you. Cause it's not, it's also about you owning your story and you using your voice. And there's a lot wrapped in that being a really massive step towards your own healing. So it, it can be a kind of a tenuous, tender time for people. I've, I've interviewed many authors uh, that have written books as um, intense as yours and that they, they've all said that same thing. Yeah, it is very intense. Uh, in the beginning, when the book, book first came out and I had to talk about it a lot, I, you always have to go back to revisit the pain in order to express yeah. it. Same thing as writing the book. I actually ended up getting shingles right in the middle of writing the book. And it was so severe it could, because it ended up in my sciatic nerve, which is the largest nerve in your body. And I was flat on my stomach for three weeks. And I just told the shingles, you know what? Go ahead and come and get me because I am going to purge and I'm going to feel as much pain as I can feel because I have to express it in this book. 
So I felt the pain emotionally again and physically. And the most interesting thing about it is when I first wrote the, the first draft, I sent it to my mentor and he read it. And he said, Kimber, you can't publish this. And at first I was fearful because I was like, oh my God, is it because I mentioned the light? People think I'm crazy. And <laughs> he, sa he said, no, Kimber, it's because it stinks. And I was like, oh my God, Summers. And he said, Kimber, you know what? You have a lot of bone in this book, but you have no meat. You need to go back and put meat on it. Mm. And, and that's when I really had to go into the pain I had to relive every beating, every foul word, my mother's death, my brother's. I mean, it was, it, 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 your heart bleeds yet again. And I wonder if, I'll, if it'll ever stop because now that the book is out there, like right now, I'm choking back tears because I feel it and uh, whew. it's, it, you just wonder, will it ever, I don't think, I think it's in the DNA and I don't know if it ever goes away. Right. I've done some pretty intense shows, obviously with lots of therapists and so on. And, um, I was one that came on recently. She was excellent, but she, she was, the show was wrapped around. You don't, there's no such thing as I've healed this wound when it comes to emotional pain from physical abuse, sexual abuse, you know, and so on. Um, so she doesn't like to use, oh, when you're healed as it's this destination you need to get to. It, she, what she said was so profound to me was, you're just always healing this. It's gonna hit you different ways at different times in your life. That's what it's there for. So it's not about getting somewhere and it not being there anymore. It's about how you live with it every day. Right. And I think uh, writing the book made me accept uh, some responsibility for not the things that happened to me as a child, because when you're five through 12 and you're getting, or five through 15 and you're getting beat on a daily basis and getting dragged out of bed in the middle of the night and having your body sold for your next, your mother's next drink or drug, you, that's not your, your fault, but there is a certain amount of forgiveness. There is forgiveness, not a certain amount. There is total forgiveness that you have to give to the abuser in order to set yourself free. Right now, now as an adult, I wound up again with another narcissistic emotional abuser, not physically, but emotionally. Mm. And I had to take a certain amount of responsibility for that because I chose to be with that person, though I knew deep down inside it wasn't the right thing. And as we become uh, of adult age, we have to take responsibility. We will find ourselves in places we don't want to be or should be, but that's not 100% the fault of the partner. And so own what is yours and then forgive yourself and forgive the person because truly there is that biblical saying that forgive them father for they know not what they do because truly if a human being 1000% knew that they were hurting another human being, would they truly do that? And so you have to forgive people for not knowing the depth of pain that they're causing you. Mm. And so when there's a chapter in my book, Greta Garbage, called Forgiveness, it's not something that you say. It's actually the act of forgiveness. It is an act. It works. It changed my entire life. And I wish I would have done it a lot sooner because I wasted a lot, a lot of good years. But if you, when you follow this act of forgiveness, you will see your whole life transform. That's the hard one. Uh, one of the hardest ones, especially when we're dealing with things like sexual abuse and physical violence. But I understand what you're saying. Absolutely. 
Yeah, because it doesn't do anything for the person that hurt you. It's all about you. It releases you because, and, and I've studied a lot of metaphysical science. So uh, this is one of the things that I learned is when you hold that grudge, that anger, that lower vibrational attachment to the abuser, it's like an umbilical cord that you had with your mother at birth. If you don't cut it, you will forever be attached to that person's energy. Do you really want that in your life? Do you, or do you want to go into your next life? And I don't even know if there is one, but just let's say there is. Do you really want to go into your next life having some kind of unfinished, unclean energy with this person and have to do it all over again? For me, let me cut that cord. Let me forgive you. You be on your way. I send you into the light. And what happens to you, God bless you. But for me, I need to be free. And it, yeah. That sounds very hopo opo ono. Uh, you know, what's really strange is before I even knew what Hopa Ono Ono was, and that's in my Ono-ono. second book, that's, I don't even know if I said it right. But yeah, I, I was just checking myself. Did I say that right? I did yeah, it out you loud. Did. <laughs> you, you did. Uh, there is a whole, I wrote the practice in my third book, which is called Ku'u Aloha, Frames from the Big Island. It's a coffee table book, but it has some wonderful, sweet expressions of aloha and how to aspire to live aloha. And that, that ancient Hawaiian practice that you mentioned is in there and it tells you how to do it. Now, I never knew what that practice was when I wrote the book Greta Garbage. But, and then when I learned what it was, I was like, wow. So it doesn't matter. It just goes to show you, it doesn't matter where you live. It yeah. doesn't matter what you believe. As long as love is the first choice, forgiveness is the second, you will have a wonderful, miraculous life. I was thinking about that with someone I know who is quite famous and devout, devout, uh, evangelical Christian, which is not where I come from at all. Um, But we're, we're very good friends. And she has had the most, I mean, she's had hard times, you know, I mean, hard times, but she's had an ex- a, a much bigger manifest uh, life of manifestation of money and blah, blah, blah. And, but some of the beliefs that she has, I think that's just not, I don't, I could not agree to that, but it, but it, we had a big conversation about this. She and I did over some wine. Um, she said, you know, I don't think it matters. I don't think that part matters. We focus on the wrong things it doesn't matter that all my beliefs aren't what you like or what anyone else likes. It's just the fact that I get up every day and I'm in a state of gratitude and I pray for others. And that's like the ticket to why I have some things come to me so much more easily because I do this practice and that practice is done in almost every religion. They, they just use different words. Exactly. And that is true. And I believe in a spirituality more than a label of a religion because, yes. yeah, I just am. And, and I do the same thing every day. My husband get, and I get up and we pray for the safety and protection of everyone and pray for everyone because uh, when, and in the metaphysical sense, and this isn't why you do it, but this is the result of what you're doing is you're actually praying for yourself because we all are one. And I know this, some of this sounds so cliche as the words are coming out of my mouth, but there is really no other way to put it. And it's a really simple logic, but I believe not, but I do believe religions sometimes make it more complicated, yes. the, the teachings than we're truly about. And so if everyone just understood that we are all connected in so many ways and what you, you know, the golden rule, here's another cliche, do unto others as others do unto you. And, but it made more sense to me once I moved to Hawaii because mostly everything here is living aloha, the spirit of love. That's all it is. You walk up and down the street. I wrote about this in Ku'u Aloha, how to live in aloha. Your neighbor greets you, you uh, exchange goods, you exchange 
food, you exchange physical energy by helping one another. It's such a beautiful way to live in this tiny big island <laughs> because there are, <laughs> well, let me say that there are eight islands. I live on the largest island with the, with uh, square footage wise, but we only have 187,000 people living on it. So it's a very small, beautiful place. And I, I love being separated by the ocean's energy from all of the other stuff that's going on. And yeah. I just, my goal is the same thing for Greta Garbage is that people open the book Ku'u Aloha and, and the Aloha just hits them in the face. It just consumes their being and yeah. And a, another lovely thing to put out into the world on top of what you already shared from inside. So thank you for doing that. You're welcome. And this book is a collection of, I think there's a hundred, uh, the, I think there's over 120 images of things that sparked me when I first got here for over the last three years of living here, just seeing beauty and capturing it and uh, showing what daily beauty looks like, no matter where you look. Uh, doing a 180 degree turn, all you see is beauty, wildlife, the sounds, the smell, the uh, energy, the, the trade winds, the hearing the whales slapping in play. And whew, sometimes it's almost overwhelming. I can be driving down the road and I just start crying because I can't believe that I am so blessed. And then you want that blessing for everyone. You want everyone to feel that so that they understand that we don't have to live like we're living. We're in control. We have the power every day to make our outside of us look like you want it to look. Again, a very simple concept. Yes, and a perfect thing to end note on. So can, where can my listeners find out more about you and get the book and, you know, stalk you? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't mind being stalked <laughs> because you just can't do a drive-by here. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> anyway, um, if you'd like to find me, I have a website. It's K-I-M-B-E-R-A. L E I G H dot C O M. You can find me on Facebook under Kimber Lee, L E I G H. Um, I am on Instagram and LinkedIn. And if you would like to reach out to me, I'm going to give you my email address because I love helping people emotionally and mentally and spiritually. So if you would like that kind of help, I do have a program that's called the Wow Factor. And if you're talking about your life to someone, then they're not saying, wow, then I can help you make that change. Mm -hmm. And my email address is K-I-M-B-E-R-A-L-E-I-G-H at M-A-C dot C-O-M. And Christian, thank, it's Kristen, I'm sorry. It's okay. Thank you so, so much for uh, inviting me as to be your first guest of the year. Mm. I'm so excited to share this fresh new energy. And what I would like to say is this in closing, none of us really know what's going to happen months from now. But if we can all just maintain this newness, this feeling of fresh and new and leave the fear behind, I, I believe we can get through just about anything that's thrown in our way that isn't of the light. Agreed. Kimber, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be able to speak with you and, uh, and know you and what you do and what you're doing out in the world. Thank you so much. And you keep doing what you're doing too, to give people a voice because we need to have that avenue. Yes, absolutely. And listeners, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Mental Health News Radio. Hi, listeners, I'll make it quick. 
These are some really cool places that give discounts and other cool things for listeners of Mental Health News Radio Network. If you want to get amazing help with healing from narcissistic abuse, go to healfromanarcissist.com. If you want CBD products that are the best of the best, I use them myself, go to pros, P R O Z E.com and use the code Mental Health 20, Mental Health 20. If you want to get daily perk ups that help retrain your brain to think more positively, go to perk up daily. Dot com and also just because this one's fun snarkycandles.com i guarantee you'll love them snarky with a y s n a r k y candles.com and don't forget if you want to hear all the shows on the network about first responders you can go to firstrespondermentalhealthnetwork.com and all of our shows that focus on narcissistic abuse narcissisticabusehealingnetwork.com thanks for listening and back to the show Will you write the low, low, lows with me? Will you write the low, low, lows with me? One thing you can always count on at Mental Health News Radio Network and my show is that there will always be dogs around. Why? They are natural healers, excellent for your mental health. The original therapy dog, Miles, has something to say in just a moment. For now, please check out all of our amazing shows at mentalhealthnewsradionetwork.com and all your favorite podcast apps. Until next time, I'm Kristen Sinanta Walker, and thank you for listening. Me tonight, and I can write the low, low, lows with me. I can write the low, low. Oh, yeah.